for answering your questions about COVID-19 this morning. You can ask us anything on our Facebook page. And here to answer a few of them, Dr. Tim Seeloff, the Chief Medical Officer for Alina Health. Dr. Seeloff, thanks for coming in. Good morning. Let's start with the issue of testing because I think there have been a number of questions about that. Do you have enough tests? The Minnesota Department of Health has enough tests to evaluate patients who are at higher risk, those individuals who have symptoms and who have travel histories, et cetera. Over the course of the next week or so, we believe there will be a significant expansion of testing so that it, it may be the case that we can test more people and learn more about the virus and its transmission. But today, if you come in with a fever and you've yes. got some of the symptoms, you may or may not get tested. Um, there are enough tests to test everybody who, in the judgment of the physician, uh, it is appropriate to do testing. Right. And again, that relates to exposure, so travel history, right. exposure within um, uh, you know, meetings, okay. that sort of yeah. thing with individuals who have the disease or are at high risk as well. It's a good idea of why to call then to see if you need the test. Yes. Uh, I, one thing I've been curious about, we know we focus on the fatalities, but really most cases are mild mm -hmm. and people recover and we should, we should stress that. What happens when you do get sick? What does it feel like? Is it like the flu? How long does it last? It's, uh, it is generally like the flu uh, in especially the majority of individuals who have mild cases. So fever and a cough, some people have muscle aches, that sort of thing. When uh, one thinks about the, the disease is very readily transmitted though, and people actually are infectious uh, before they have symptoms. That's mm -hmm. the current scientific thinking. So that's why all of the public health measures to uh, social distance, to reduce meeting sizes, to limit travel, that sort of thing are really important because we want to reduce the number of people who are sick at any given time. Because you could be sick and you don't know it. Because right. you could be sick and you don't know it. And what we want to do is flatten the curve of the number of people who become seriously ill. And that way our hospital systems won't be overstressed. Let me uh, ask Lisa's question from Facebook. How long does it take to get results from a test? Right now, testing is turned around in less than 24 hours. And then are you self-quarantined in that 24-hour uh, period? Those individuals who um, believe they need to be tested and whose doctors believe they need to be tested, that would make perfect be. sense yeah. to, to self-isolate while you're waiting for the test All result. All right, we have another question from a viewer. Anna asks, what do you recommend to those with pre-existing conditions such as diabetes or asthma? Should they be taking even more precautions? Mm. Yes, it is, it is absolutely the case that as we see schools closing, as we see travel restrictions, as we see uh, meeting sizes being reduced, that individuals who are at higher risk should take extra precautions. They should be especially careful, as we all should be. What does be. that mean? Like stay home so more? Or? Stay home. Uh, wash surfaces if you're if you're in a, an office situation. Wash your hands. Be careful around people who are um, who who appear to be ill. Make sure that those people know they should go home and, and take care of themselves at and, home. And I think you answered Deb's question, where uh, if you do have COVID-19 before you have symptoms, you are contagious. Yes, that's yeah, the current thing. That's the whole thing. Okay, keep those questions coming on our Facebook page. Dr. Seeloff will answer some more in about 20 minutes, and you'll be with us on mid-morning at nine as well. Thanks, yes. Doctor. You're welcome. Thank you.